Now, when I tell you that I beat Pokemon in another language through Google Translate, you are probably thinking, well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But it was absolutely hilarious. So, there are two types of Google Translate. The one where you type in a word and it translates it to the selected language. And then there's the one I'll be using, where you pick the language of choice and scan the words you want translated. And so I did this in Pokemon. I then started up the game and selected my language of choice, which is obviously for this challenge going to be Japanese. And I wasn't sure if I even chose the right language because Google Translate was already mixing up the words and confusing them from what I am used to. So I picked at least what I thought was Japanese and moved on. I then went on to name my character and, oh, I wonder what that button does. Next I went to obtain my bag and apparently it translates saving to la boat. I don't know. But then we meet Hop outside, and one other thing is that Google Translate struggles with its sizing of words. So for some reason, it changes the size of words for no reason at all, which is very funny too. I then walked over to the right to talk to Hop about going to the next town, when clearly he needed to calm down a bit or something. Like, jeez. And after that, um rather interesting interaction with Hop, we make it down to Wedgehurst Town, where Leon is waiting for us, with his apparently massive M on his forehead. And pretty soon after, we get back to Hop's house to obtain our starter from Leon, of which I choose Scorbunny, or as Google Translate calls it, Hibani, as it is the best equipped starter against the first gym. I then begin naming it, or at least trying to, because it tries to translate the words you are typing as you type them, which makes it very interesting, at least, to type stuff correctly. When finally I got the name that I wanted in Sperky, Hop then picks his Grookey and challenges us to the first rival battle of the challenge. His Wooloo was very easy thanks to Tackle, and the Grookey easy as well because I learned Ember right before it. And after the fiasco with the Wooloo in the woods and encountering Zacian in the woods and... I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention to the plot. We then make it over to Professor Magnolia's house and Magnolia mentioned something about Leon's girlfriend or something? Um, I don't remember that in the original game, but, you know, whatever. Hop then of course challenges us to another battle of which we crush him in, yet again. But side note, apparently Google Translate thought Leon just represented the letter N as a whole here which was similarly hilarious. And after the unbelievable coincidence of two shooting stars falling into our laps, we give them to Magnolia and get our Dynamax bracelet. Moving forward a little bit, we hop on the train with Hop and make it out to the wild area where Sonia is waiting for us. I then completely ignore her and the wild area as a whole actually and cut through it to Motostoke City, which is actually the first translation to make sense as it says it translates to Engine City. We then walk out over to the elevator and head up to the gym and sign in for the gym challenge. When Leon, or I guess according to Google Translate, Dandy, stops us in our tracks. We then get up to the top and register for the gym challenge. When after, we go to spend the night at the Badoo drop in, where Team Yell again stops us in our tracks. But, oh, never mind, I lied. It wasn't Team Yell, because it translates to the Ale Group. Yes, you heard that right. The Ale Group. I know, I know, I couldn't believe it either, but it is the Ale Group. The following morning, we did the cute little gym challenge ceremony thing and made our way onward to Route 3. And the only thing of note that happened across this road and the cave following is that while battling a trainer, my Scorbunny evolved and we were ready for the first gym now. And after a quick battle with Bede, I made him see how much better I was. Whoa, whoa, gonna get it, Bede. You see, calm down there. Quit yelling at me. Soon after, I made my way into Turfield Town, the home of the first gym, only to get smashed into by a Wooloo. Next, I made my way straight into the gym, and after hurting some very cute but very annoying Wooloo, it was time for Milo's battle, who our starter pretty much obliterated, being fire-type against grass-types. Next, I headed eastward to the next route, 
and one with two crucial Pokemon for us to use in our challenge. First of which is an Applin, who I wanted to catch along the route, because it is just a cool Pokemon and was hoping to evolve it into a Flapple. And next was the Gift Toxel from the lady inside of the daycare, which will be perfect for the next gym, the Water Gym. Moving on further through the route, we encounter some Team Yet, sorry, Ale Group grunts, and after beating them, we can finally get a bike. But before I tried my hand at the next gym, I had to dramatically level up my Toxel until it at least evolved and learned an electric type move at level 30. So I began battling Max Raid Dens and even encountering a Whooper, who I didn't realize was so good at driving, until finally my Toxel would go on to evolve into a Toxtricity, allowing me to be very confident going into the second gym. I then went back to Hullbury and grabbed Nessa, or sorry, Lorena, and returned to her gym to swiftly breeze through her gym with our now level 30 electric type monster who brought us easily past Nessa, or sorry, Lorena's gym. And boy do I tell you, she was not happy about that. Then skipping forward a little bit, after defeating some more ale group grunts, I made my way through the rest of the cave and yes, I guess I agree, Hop, to the turnip. Not much happened after that other than the catching of a new team member, a Dredna who I named Hardhat. I then made my way back up to the gym, which is the fire gym, and with our new Dredna should be relatively easy. And after doing the puzzle, and at some point having Google Translate completely forget how to translate run, and instead it became get angry, I made my way in and our Dredna and Toxicity destroyed everything in our way, giving us the next badge. Hop and I then made our way back down to be seen off by Kabu. Or Turnip? Oh, so that's what Hop meant earlier when he said Turnip. It all makes sense now. Next was to make our way back to the wild area to catch a new Pokemon, of which would be a Zatu. The perfect Pokemon to counter the fighting types upcoming of the next gym. When finally, after a couple of tries, I had caught my Zatu, who I named Mystic. I then made my way over to the gate to Hammerlock, and then proceeded to ignore all of the story stuff, because now that I had access to the city, I had an apple to evolve. My little applin. Then after some more story stuff, including talking with the super professional chairman of the region that everyone looks up to even though he only wears a long sleeve shirt and boxer shorts, I then decided to make my way back to the wild area to grind for some more levels on my team as a whole, but mostly for Mystic, as he would be the key to the next gym, being dual type, both super effective against fighting type. After the session of grinding, I got a lot of experience candies, or sorry, Kayikin candies? Whatever that means. Enough to level up Mystic to level 46 and boost the other levels of our team members a little bit as well. But as you will have seen while giving out the experience candies, is that things like the bag are super confusing in this challenge because it will translate words over old words. So if you scroll down in the bag, it puts the translated words from before over the untranslated words, which just makes it entirely more confusing and very funny. After we finished making it to Stoneside, where the next gym is, I swiftly decide to immediately make my way to the gym, because with Mystic, we should just crush her whole team. And pretty soon after the best gym puzzle in all of Pokemon, we made it to B, who was, as I predicted, pretty comically easy, with us one-shotting just about her whole team. After the battle, one thing I forgot to mention was that the little Wimpod that I caught in the Galar Mine that I had named Gerald evolved into a wonderful Galisopod, and it was actually going to be useful now. Next was the whole thing with B, like destroying the ruins or something, and then getting kicked from the gym challenge, and was all like, it's a lie! But other than that, not much happened in these conversations, and Google Translate did a pretty good job. Then I continued on to the Glimwood Tangle, and while fighting some of the trainers inside, I realized just how underleveled and weak my team really was and that the only strong Pokemon was my Zatu, who I had actually taken time to grind up. So I made my way through the rest of the forest and to Balanlia Town, where in the Pokemon you can apparently buy good scratches and great scratches. So I bought a few great scratches and then went back to the wild area to do a bit more grinding. While grinding I came across a Payukamuku, and while fighting it, it translated the little thing on its mouth that, if you ask me, does look a fair bit like a Japanese symbol, so fair play Google Translate. 
but in the middle of the battle it just translates it to just the word big and I would have to agree with it Dynamax Payukamuku is pretty big but after a while of grinding later I had enough experience candies to level up my toxicity for the next gym now if you don't know why I wanted to level up him specifically so bad is because I needed it to pass level 40 in order to learn poison jab this would give me great super effective stab coverage against the upcoming fairy gym and a super effective move with high power to pair with it. After some very confusing move relearning and me being not sure if I actually deleted the right move because I couldn't see anything over Google Translate, it was finally time to try the next gym. And like I said, with the next gym being a fairy gym, I very easily swept through it with my poison type toxicity and obtained the badge. I then made my way to the following route, which is the only place in the game where you can find phalanx, which will be important later on. And with minimal struggles and minimal funny translations, for that matter, other than the fact that it called the legendary fire dog Pokemon Arcanine Winty, which is kind of funny, I guess. <laughs> oh, oh, and apparently Snom, you know, this adorable little guy, that's name is usually just four letters, translates to Yuki Hassan. So, take that for what you will. But afterwards, we made it swiftly to Sir Chester City, where I would go on to challenge the next gym. But first, we talked to Hop, who informed us that he'd lost yet again, and had an interesting way to tell us this. And I made my way to the gym puzzle itself. Now, I hate this gym puzzle. And I think these few clips of me actually trying it will explain everything. I cannot see anything, dude. This is so hard. Oh my goodness, literally zero bearings whatsoever. <gasps> oh my gosh. Hallelujah! Thank you. After making it through that horrible puzzle, I finally made it out to the gym leader, who was comically easy actually. And with the power of G on our flapple, his whole team basically either fell to Flapple or Dreadnought, so another badge down, I guess. After leaving the gym, I proceeded out to where Sonya was waiting for me, to bring me to an amazing restaurant called the Steakhouse of Delicious Bob. So, after my five-star, three-course meal at the all-inclusive House of Delicious Bob, I was ready to make my way to the next route. But before that, I went quickly back and caught a Phalanx in preparation for the next gym, which, if you didn't know, is a dark gym, which Phalanx will help tremendously in. Then, after a little bit more grinding to get Format up to par with the rest of my team, he was level 51 and ready to start obliterating any and every dark type we cross. I then began east to the next route, where, after defeating some ale group grunts, I upgraded my bike, allowing it to go on water now. I then immediately made my way from there to Spikemuth, where, uh... <laughs> I just paused it and the man type, like, leaped at me. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> but after the absolute maze that is that route, I finally made my way out to Spikemuth, or almost there at least where the only way in is the massive garage door outside of it is closed. But luckily, my best friend Marnie, who I've only actually met like twice now, lets us in the other side. But only if we beat her in a battle, of course. So we wipe the floor with her and move into the town. I then decided that I was more than prepared enough to challenge the gym, so I decided to make my way in without much plan other than just to sweep with Phalanx. After battling all the necessary ale group grunts, and this one that said he was about to cry, so, of course, he battled me. But after beating him, which in hindsight didn't help with him wanting to cry, but I digress, we then make it to Piers, who ends up being, like I thought, comically easy. Phalanx did all the heavy lifting, and without Dynamax, the battle was won. Then there was, like, an explosion outside of the town that I just... Ignored, and went back to Bal and Leah, because the next gym was a dragon-type gym, and I wanted a good fairy-type counter for it, so I went back to the forest to catch a Morgrim, who I would evolve into a Grimmsnarl, after a whole lot more grinding. After a rather large amount of time grinding, I had enough experience candies to get our Morgrim up to level 57, which was more than enough to evolve it. Then was the daunting task of getting its moveset right without deleting moves I actually wanted, 
and after almost half an hour, I finally ended up with the right moveset that I wanted of Spirit Break, False Surrender, Bulk Up, and Play Rough. Next, I went back to Hammerlock where the next gym is, and with my newly gained power of my Grimmsnarl, I was more than ready for the next gym. After some easy battles against the gym trainers and nothing really to note Google Translate wise during the gym, it was time for the next battle and for the final badge with Raihan, or I guess Kibana as Google Translate calls him, which I would argue sounds cooler than Raihan, but I digress. We then were able to beat him without very much trouble, and while I say this, his Duraludon is always an absolute menace, but between our Cinderace and Grimmsnarl, we took it out with relative ease. Then after some story stuff, I start off on the train with Hop to Winden, or I guess Shoot City. I wonder what happens when we get there. But before we could make it there, I had to make it through the ice route just prior, and in doing so I faced a hiker with a Mudsdale. Pretty standard stuff. And then went to use Bounce on it, and was surprised to see that it translated Bounce to Jump, which was funny and surprisingly accurate. The rest of the route was surprisingly easy, and soon later we had made it out to Shoot City. I then decided to heal up my team and head straight for the semifinals of the gym challenge. And while registering, according to Google Translate, the league staff member summed up Pokemon in the best way I've ever heard, in just four words. <laughs> he pretty much summed up Pokemon battles in one sentence. With you, fight on the big stage. <laughs> That's about it. Anyways, I then made my way in and very easily beat Marnie with just our phalanx and hop with a mixture of Pokemon, all of which super effective against him. And without many funny translations later, I had won these rounds and was headed back to the Badoo drop-in, when I was rudely bombarded with questions from the reporters. How do you feel about having won these semifinals? And as the simple man I am, my only response was, I'm glad. Then after those questions, Piers just walks in quite rudely, at least to hop, like what the heck man, I know he can get annoying, but not that annoying. Then there is the worst part of these games, when the stupid league guy in his sunglasses hides amongst all the other guys in regular glasses, and you have to find him over and over and over and over again. But eventually we did it and were able to move on to the main tower to meet Chairman Rose, which was I guess the whole goal of this whole thing. Then Marnie makes the incredible discovery that a secretary is also a secretary and we make our way into the tower to battle the onslaught of enemies to come. One of them blatantly admits that he is just so very high. Just looked it up. I'm high! <laughs> no! <laughs> is he though? <laughs> Dang! Okay. <laughs> and I would have to agree with him. That tower is pretty tall, but I may have worded it a little differently. However, after defeating all the trainers, I made it to the top where the final obstacle was waiting for me, Oleana. And boy was she ever mad at me. Apparently for stealing Chairman Rose's jam. Not like stopping him from doing his master plan to like rule the world in all of Gala or something. No, just some casual jam theft. Then was her actual battle, of which I was able to beat her with relative ease. It made our way to Leon being scolded by Chairman Rose. And after all that boring stuff, especially without any funny translations, we make our way back out into the semifinals of the gym challenge, which I'm going to spare you of having to watch because Google Translate worked relatively flawlessly in the battles, and each battle went almost exactly as the gym did when I fought the respective leaders prior. Then, just you know, the whole middle of the stadium bursts into a large pulsing beam of pink and red energy right before we're about to fight Leon, or Dandy, of which we probably need to stop. And so I set off on the journey to the Slumbering Weald to fetch Zostian and Zamazenta's prized possessions, a falling apart sword and a very ragged shield. I then made an attempt to fight Eternatus, but first we had to get through Chairman Rose. And really, in this battle, our Cinderace was the absolute star of the show, taking all of his team in just one or two hits. And after the battle, I get the incredibly useful piece of information about Chairman Rose, that he loves speeches. After defeating Rose, we are finally able to go up to the top of the tower and battle Eternatus, and actually catch him for that matter, without many funny translations and not a very hard battle, just a bit of a time-consuming one, leaving us just one obstacle in the way, beating Leon. 
we walk onto the field more ready than ever. The battle with Leon starts pretty easy with us taking out his Aegislash with Cinderace and his Hacthorus with our Grimmsnarl. His next Pokemon, his Dragapult, was the one I was most scared of. But Toxtricity tanked all of its hits and let us switch into a healthy Grimmsnarl to take it out. Cinderace took out Mr. Rhyme and Flapple took out Inteleon. Then was his final Pokemon, Charizard. Now, this is where things got a little dicey. And not because of the actual Pokemon battle itself, just because of this. A uh, even match, completely even, 65 at levels to 65 levels. Both Dynamax slash Gigantamax. Charge the console, it'll go to sleep soon? Wait, no, 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 no. Excuse me? Please, Oko, just Oko, please. Do me a favor and just, like, please, like, you know, do the thing. So, uh, it didn't do the thing. It actually did quite the opposite, and the Charizard KO'd us. But luckily, the Switch lasted just enough time to be able to wait out the Charizard's Gigantamax turns and allow us to barely KO with a healed Dreadnought. In the most poetic fashion ever, the Switch died just moments after I had won. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and if you did enjoy I do stuff like this all the time and even stream it all on Twitch, so go follow me over there if you're into the live experience. But until next time, thanks for watching, I love you guys, and peace.